Hi, I'm Kenneth. This is the Ministry of Triumph in Christ. Before we go to our topic, our message today, there's this sense of urgency in me to pray for some of you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we want to take authority over the spiritual atmosphere around God's people right now. We want to take authority and bind every negative spirit bind every negative influence that try to dampen God's people's faith, that try to discourage God's people. Right now, we take authority over all this. And right now, God's people are being set free from all those spiritual atmospheres that try to dampen their spirits. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And this is what the Lord say for this time. Be discerning in this perilous and dangerous time. The enemy will do anything to deceive you in a time like this, but fear not, for I have given you the spiritual tools that you need to discern. I have given you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in you knows all things. The Holy Spirit in you will help you to discern what is of me and what is not of me, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit in you will help you to discern even the hidden intentions and motives of the enemy. So, beloved of God, whatever spiritual attack that you may be going through at the moment, fear not. You have the higher authority. You have the authority in Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name. Amen. And the Lord is giving you this anointing today. The Lord is giving you this enabling, empowering today to discern. So what is the definition of discerning here? It's diakrisis in Greek. It simply means to separate what is and what is not thoroughly. In the context of our study today, to separate what is of God and what is not of God. Now, some individuals have been gifted with this gift of discerning. But the good news is this. All of us believers can be enabled by the Holy Spirit to discern. So let's detour to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 10 about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And discerning of spirits is one of those gifts of the Holy Spirit. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another what? Discerning of spirits. And this word discerning here is diakrisis in Greek, which means to separate what is of God and what is not of God, or what is God's will and what is not God's will for you. Now, just as everyone can pray for healing, but some have been specially gifted with this gift of healing. By the same token, everyone can prophesy, but some have been specially gifted with this gift of prophecy. So the same it is with discerning of spirits. Everyone can discern, but some individuals have been specially gifted with this gift of discerning. So whether you have been given this gift in 1 Corinthians 12 or not, you can discern. Everyone, every believer, with the Holy Spirit's help, you can discern. By the way, what exactly is this gift called discerning of spirits? It is an enabling by the Holy Spirit to determine the source of something, be it from God, the devil, the flesh, or the world. In other words, the person who operates in this spiritual gift he or she can discern if something is from God or something is not from God, whether it's from the devil, the flesh, or the world, the worldly ways, the worldly influence. So this is a very crucial gift, especially in this end time, especially in this perilous and dangerous time that we live in. So that comes to our next question. Why is discerning so important in this perilous time? Now, here's the reason. Scammers, fraudsters, con men, they change tactics and strategies all the time. As a matter of fact, they do their quote-unquote homework rather well. They do their quote-unquote R&D, research and development, rather well too. In other words, they always find new ways to cheat and to deceive and to con. In fact, deception and scams are becoming more and more creative and extreme. You can read that even in the news. 
Now, it can even be religious or spiritual deception. It may look innocent and not harmful in the outward, but it's a trap. Beware, God's people. That's why all the more you need the Holy Spirit in your life in this perilous and dangerous time. And all the more you should be walking and communing with the Holy Spirit very, very closely. Holy Spirit should be your best friend and companion in life because only the Holy Spirit knows all and is all wise, wiser than any human on this earth. And of course, wiser than all the demons in the spiritual world and even in the physical world. And right now, the Lord is releasing the anointing upon you to set you free from every form of deception and cause you to be so sensitive in your spirit to know, to discern what is of God and what is not of God. Interestingly, Jesus taught his disciples to be wise as serpents. Now, in Matthew 10, verse 16, Jesus said this, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless or innocent as doves. What does this statement, be wise as serpents, imply? Now, don't get him wrong. Jesus didn't mean you become like a serpent or a snake. God forbid that you become like a serpent that cheated Adam and Eve. But this expression, be wise as serpents, here implies the ability to deal with even the most extreme of trickeries and deceptions conjured up by the devil or by man. That's the definition. In other words, no matter how tricky or deceiving the devil or the bad people are, you are still able to handle it, counter it, and overcome it. Amen. Now, here's another piece of good news. You can train yourself to develop this discernment. You can train yourself to detect the hidden motives of someone or the spirits behind the motives. Now, in other words, what is beneath or behind the outward show or the sweet talk of a person. You can detect and discern who is trying to take advantage of you and use you or rather abuse you. And right at the end of this message, there will be an impartation upon you to receive all this. Amen. Now, the key here is this. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, dwelling in you, you can follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. For those who are led by the Holy Spirit, they are called sons of God. So follow the leading of the Holy Spirit inside of you and sense the peace or no peace inside of you, whether to be involved in that something, to join that something, or to participate in that something, or to accept an invitation for something. Now, this applies to religious invitation. This applies to certain business invitation. This applies to career invitation. This also applies to social invitation. The Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you. The Holy Spirit will lead you in every aspect of your life. And here's the revelation of what God wants to tell you today, to receive discernment like a godly priest. Let me explain. But before that, here's what the scripture says in Ezekiel 44, verse 23 to 24, to back up what the Lord has spoken. I read here, and they, the priest, shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the unholy, and cause them to what? To discern between the unclean and the clean. In times of controversy, they shall stand as judges and judge it according to my judgments. They shall keep my laws and my statutes. In other words, keeping God's instruction, keeping God's word. You see here, those days, the priest received the enabling to make a distinction between what's God and what's not. This is the cross-reference to discerning of spirits that you see in the New Testament. But you may be saying, Pastor, but that was the godly priest those days in the Old Covenant. But I tell you what, under the New Covenant, you too are a priest. You too are not just a priest, but a king. You are a king and a priest. That's who you are as a believer in the new covenant. Where's the proof, pastor, you may ask? 1 Peter 2, verse 9. I read here, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You see these words, royal priesthood, king and priest. 
I read again. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, who was Peter referring to? You and I. Whether you are called into the spiritual office of apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist, or whether you are in the business world, you are in professional world, whatever you do for a living, this verse in 1 Peter 2 verse 9 includes you. So notice here again the words royal and priesthood. Yes, that's who you are, a king and a priest. A king who reigns with God in the spiritual realm and a priest who represents God in this world. The difference between a king and a priest is this. A king reigns with God, whereas a priest represents God in this world. But today, the Lord is saying to you, you are a king and a priest. You reign with God in the spiritual realm and you represent God in this world. And as a king and a priest, you too can ask for discernment. So what is the key to receiving? Spend time with the Word and the Spirit. Never let your eyes depart from the Word of God. And never let your spirit be numbed by the ways of this world or the influence of this world or the deception of the enemy. Commune with the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Go deeper and deeper in the Spirit. And that's how we are more and more in tune with the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is saying. John 8, verse 31 and 32, Jesus said this, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and this truth lives in you. And this truth in you sets you free from even every form of deception in this world. John 14, verse 26, Jesus said this, But the Helper, the Parakletos, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will what? He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. Notice here, He will teach you what? All things, not some things, not a few things, but all things. All means all. How do you allow Him to teach you all things? By spending time with the Holy Spirit, yes, exclusively with the Holy Spirit. By praying in the Spirit, being totally open and yielded to the Holy Spirit. And that's how you begin to hear from the Holy Spirit. You begin to discern from the Holy Spirit. You'll be able to differentiate between what's of God and what's not of God. You begin to discern in every detail. You begin to discern what is authentic and what is counterfeit. You begin to discern what is truth and what is fake. You begin to discern what is of good intention and what is just for outward show. And I believe this is what the Lord meant by spiritual tools that He has spoken just now. And here's a prayer for the impartation of the Holy Spirit upon you. Let us pray. O Lord God, let there be an impartation from your Spirit upon your beloved right now. We ask and we receive by faith. Fill us with the fullness of your Spirit. Enable us to discern what is of you and what is not of you. Enable us to discern what is your will and what is not your will. Enable us to know what to do and what not to do. Enable us to know what path to take and what path not to take. We want to glorify you, O Lord, in every aspect of our lives and in our walk on this earth. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to be faithful to release what the Lord has put in my heart to release to you at this time. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.